one of the things we mentioned throughout this whole assessment was there was three pertinent tests that were a little bit more important than the other one, okay? But this is the third one, okay? What we're gonna test, I'm not gonna explain it first, this is how I typically do it, because I wanna make my conversation matter, okay? So, most of the times, because people aren't aware of this stuff, they'll stand in their positions they feel comfortable with, and I want them to do that. So don't fix your posture, okay? What I'm gonna get you to do now is follow me with your shoulders. I wanna get you to turn your shoulders toward me. Just your shoulders, yeah? Turn your shoulders, yeah. As much as you can, yeah, okay? And then I would do the same on the other side. Good stuff, okay. Keep this in mind what we're looking at. We're looking at rotation. But we wanna to try to establish where they're garnering the rotation because this will lead into some of their chronic issues that they may have. That's why we do this test, that's why it's super important. It's kind of like the feet test, okay? These things are correlated. Now what I want to do is I'm going to get that proper alignment in their posture. And a lot of people are going to be bad with it. So the best way to really cue them is to get them to dig their feet into the ground. They're going to shove their knees out. I'm going to tell them to bring their big toe back in. For the people who lose their arches and have fallen arches, now they've built an arch. Now they just got to squeeze their glutes. Okay, this is why you don't need orthotics and stuff like that. This is your arch of your foot. Even with flat feet people, now they have an arch of their foot. They just haven't been taught this. Exactly, they haven't been taught this, okay? Their arms are not gonna necessarily be here, nor is their lower back. So they're gonna pinch their shoulder blades back, I'm gonna get them to tuck their pelvis. A lot of times they'll have a head forward position, so now I'm gonna get them to pull their head back. This is neutral. Over a period of time, it's just simply standing like this. A lot of pains and strains typically go away. You may not feel it first, if you get people to stand like this for a period of time, it typically goes away. From this profile, now we're going to expose what we're looking at. So I'm going to get you to rotate your shoulders towards me now again. Okay? Good. And if you look at my boy Carlos, and like most people, there's some limitations. Okay? You can't see from this angle, but he hits a wall a little bit and he has to start turning on his lower back. Keep this in mind. We'll do the same on the other side. Cool, he's a little bit better on his left side, okay? What we did was super important. We talk about spinal health all the time. We're designing all these programs, there's so much information out there for this stuff. But what we really did was we exposed the ability to create rotation from the healthy parts of the spine or what should be addressing rotation, which is your thoracic spine, okay? Your lower back does assist rotation, I'm not debating that. 20 to 30 degrees, it should help assist it but it's mostly designed for extension and flexion, okay? The T-spine is what we just addressed, and it's designed for rotation, okay? And it should rotate almost like an owl. Like, this shoulder should be able to almost turn 180 towards the wall without changing my position. Because of all the things we've talked about thus far, with the imbalances from lifestyle habits and training paradigms and all these things where you get imbalances, this becomes hypermobile. And that's again this external bias. When it becomes hypermobile, these areas, when I need to commit to movement, become more under momentum and there's more risk involved again, okay? Because they don't have control and understanding how to transition out of those positions. And because this is over access, one of the things we talked about in our postural analysis was your body finds a way to get homeostasis or balance. If this is over accessed and over mobile, what do you think happens to the thoracic spine? It's tight. It's super tight, okay? It has to find a way to get some stability because if this was over mobile and this is over mobile, you throw your back out, shoulder out, neck out, blah, 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 okay? And this is all again because of lifestyle habits, positions, postures you do all the time, okay? So, what is that surrounding my thoracic spine? We talked about this in the postural analysis. Your neck your chest, muscles, right? Ribs, back, so they get tight. But what is that also around? Your respiratory system, your lungs, your blood system, your heart that regulates blood through your body, and near your diaphragm. So if you have people who have chronic lower back problems, their core doesn't activate, they get shoulder problems, neck problems, they run out of energy, they may get sick a lot, they have sinus issues, breathing issues, is this not directly related to the tightness around there? Absolutely, 100%. It's gonna contain all these muscle groups and they're gonna stay so compressed, they don't have any freedom of space, okay? When they need to commit and look and move, 
they're going to over access areas where they get tired and the whole body gets inflamed. So then you're just playing the run around again. You're designing programs with them with resistance and you haven't addressed the problem. Tightness here, tightness here, tightness here. Okay? Again, that's why I would start with rollouts. I want to give them the best success for the program that I'm designing first and in the future. And if I address these things at the heart of the matter and I make it a habitual thing, they'll understand the importance of it and then we'll use it. And I need to improve this to improve all the other activation points. So I'll start them with rollouts and they'll get them in drills where they're learning how to cohesively activate the activation, retractability, and inflection of not only their lower back, but their upper back too. And then I'll start introducing rotational components. But if I'm gonna do that, I'll teach them how to stay in the proper organized position of their pelvis in turn with that rotational capacity. This will take a lot of the pressure off of those areas that they're over moving with, okay, or over accessing with, and it'll actually strengthen the areas I want them to look at, okay? They don't have to go hammer out their squat max and their deadlift max to build strength and awareness and stability here. They can simply work on some rotations and some smaller intricate things. They get the same results, less damage, less inflammation, more understanding of their body. And that's what I want. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, cool. All right. All right, the only test you missed.